Good morning, everybody. Uh, to date, we've been looking at colour and tone in our photographs and the way that colour and tone contribute to the narrative and the aesthetics of our photograph. And when we talked about engaging images, the two key aspects of creating an engaging image were the aesthetics of the image, and that's where colour contributes to as well, and also the narrative of the image. And the colour, as we've explored in the past, actually has a narrative in its own, um, whether it's blue and it's calm, it's um, whether it's red and it's danger, all of those things contribute to that story. So today um, we're going to move on from our last topic, which was complementary colours. And we saw with complementary colours that the colours opposite on the colour wheel give an image a pop and really give it energy and really attract the viewer's attention into the image. Just the colours alone make that image aesthetically attractive and also give it a narrative of look at me. We're going to today look at the colours not opposite on the colour wheel, but next to each other on the colour wheel. And they have a look and feel of their own and a narrative and an emotion of their own, which is quite different to that very dynamic pop of the opposite colours on the colour wheel. So the uh, bands on the colour wheel that we'll be looking at are those colours that are adjacent to each other and they are the yellow greens, the blue greens, the violet blues, the red violets and the red yellows and we're going to have a look at examples of each of those and you'll see how these harmonious or analogous colours give a um, a feel to an image and it's that feel that's the emotion and that goes into the narrative and what they give to the uh, aesthetics of the image is a calmness and they they don't detract from the textures and the uh, shapes of an image and that's a bit like with um, when we turn an image to black and white the cut, we take away the distraction of the colours. Well, when we have harmonious colours, the simplicity and elegance of having colours that are close to each other on the colour wheel prevent us from being distracted and give us a calmness to actually investigate that image. And we can then um, really look at the subject. So, when I'm talking about these harmonious colours, they're the ones that if we take sort of three to five that are next to each other, and you can see all the different uh, types of analogous or harmonious colours that we can have. The uh, yellow green one is one that I often explore because I take a lot of uh, photos of plants and it's a very, uh, when we looked at green, we saw that it, green for our psychology means nature and nature means um, peace and calm. And we really like this yellow green palette because it means that we're out in nature. And that's when, where you get most of your yellow green uh, photographs. But you can also see it, uh, people will use this yellow green palette in interior decorating. And you can see that when we've got that very simple palette, that very simple colour palette, we can then investigate the shapes and the textures within each of these images. We're not um, hung up on looking around the image at different colours. And particularly yellow, if we've got yellow in a uh, an image that has other colours in it, like blues and um, reds and we, we always gravitate towards the red and yellow so by having the color palette purely yellow and green we don't necessarily dive into the yellow we're not distracted by it another um, 
analogous color set of the blue greens and these are very calming colors and and i love blue greens and you'll probably notice that i wear a lot of blue green and i surround myself with blue green because i really enjoy it as a color palette and you can see the calmness that it brings a photograph and when we talked about blue as a color i said then it always um gives us a feeling of, of peace and calm and you can see that in this group blue green color palette the red violets um, when we talked about purple and red we said that they had, were colors that had a lot of energy in them and you can see that when you use that um, red violet in a an image you do it, it's got a lot more energy than the blue green which is a much calmer one but a very aesthetically pleasing one and allows you to investigate the textures and the shapes and not be um, t taken in by the purples and the reds because that they're the only colors in the the color scheme and you can then look further into the image so that blue violet is a, is a very um, aesthetically pleasing color scheme and when you see it, um, it's something that it's really worth capturing because it's a fairly unusual colour scheme to get. We can also have five analogous colours on this colour wheel where we, we pick up all of uh, the or five colours that are next to each other. And it does give a pleasing aesthetic, but it's much, uh, it starts to have a bit of a pop to it. It's a much less harmonious feel but it still is, is a pleasing one to look at. So keep an eye out when you do get those that band of the five colors, that it does make a really aesthetically pleasing image. And often when you're out shooting and you've got your camera goggles on, this is where you need to look for colors because if you see a set of colors that look really pleasing, try and frame up to just just get those set of colors rather than get something else in the image that really takes away from those harmonious colors that you can see. So this can be in landscapes where we can pick up the, the, the reds and uh, through to yellows, the blues and the greens, and they just give the balance and harmony to the images. Uh, again, when I was saying about isolating, if you can see these colors, within your camera goggle frame you can then frame up and zoom in and crop to just pick up these colors and just alone the colors make a really aesthetically pleasing image and allow you to explore those shapes and lines so we often see them in street scenes we just have to learn to isolate them and the other thing is when you're doing portraits um, this is with all your different genres of photography. You can choose your backgrounds and your props and your lighting to give you these harmonious colors. And when you're doing still life, the same thing to frame up where you've got those colors. So uh, I was photographing my snowball tree yesterday and I could have chosen to do it against the sky, which was blue. Um, I could have chosen to do it against the rest of the garden, which was had, you know, my spring blossoms and things in it, the pinks, etc. But I sort of stood back and positioned the camera to try and get the other snowball tree in the background so that it would have a harmonious set of colors in the background. So this is where you need to know this information is when you're actually framing up and trying to optimize the aesthetics, the aesthetics within your image. And appreciating what's going to work and what's not going to work. So last time I asked you to um, look for complementary colours when you were out shooting and I asked you to make sure that you could bring me some examples today if you can and you um, were able to and this time I'm going to ask you the same with the harmonious colours. If you can see next time you've got you're out shooting and you've got your camera goggles on of what looks good try and think about those colors that are close together on the color wheel and how pleasant they look within an image so thank you and uh, we'll finish for today